century and was a focal point for the Total Rally South Africa, second round of both the FIA African and South African Rally Champions. The MGB GT in a modern day rally? Roger Pierce is the MG fanatic. I'm very rally miles is this is done worldwide now. This one? Uh, about 90,000 kilometers. You'll see it's breaking up a little bit here and there. So, but, but it's uh, been to 38 different countries on uh, about five major international roads. Done in London, Sydney twice. Done in Mexico once. Africa once. And Targa Tasmania about three times. Unfortunately, um, we're all a bit long in the tooth now. We're having difficulty seeing our way and finding our way. And we're hitting the odd rock and thing, which is not doing much of a group. But now we're having a lot of fun. And it came here for them. Rally leaders Jan Hardig and Douglas Judd took it easy in the dying stages of the event. The onboard footage clearly shows that Hardig is nursing the Sassel VW Golf to the finish. Hannes Robler and Richard Lee kept the pressure on Hardig, but the gap was just too big to close, and they settled for a secure third place. Class A6 leaders Edwin Lawrence and Robert Paisley in the team total Toyota Corolla. The fourth overall at the stage of the event was good, considering the problems they encountered the previous day. Bronco Spade businessman Scott Berger had settled into second place overall, and was the leading one for a competitor in the Subaru Inversa. And Johnny Gemmel and Hideon Trollope decided to back off and earn maximum points in the M4 class. by a leaking CD joints, a leaking main bearing seal, and a slipping clutch with added pressure on Barry Fodler and Mike Burrows in the A7 Sassel VW Polo player. An off-road excursion in stage 15 cost team total player J.P. Damso and Graham Hooper a minute, but they soldiered on in second place in the A6 class. The distinctive exhaust note of the Motor One Subaru Impreza of Sakhon Singh and Tom Muriyuki the leading foreign competitors in the Total Rally South Africa. Star of the show, Hogan Breck can certainly have the credentials to become a champion. The Excuderia Africa Ford Escort of Paolo Piazza Musso, now owned by Zimbabwe and James White, who will still get into grips with the vehicle. White and Phil Arsenault were well placed for a top 10 finish. <laughs> Rally leaders Hubbard and Judd. Only a few more stages to go. There's no over revving this engine. leaders Hannes Wobler and Richard Lee from the total Bridgestone Nissan were still going strong. Enjoy the ride with Hannes. Fourth place Lawrence and Paisley. The two Kermit Royal Japan were comfortable leaders in the A6 class. On board was Goldberger and Fritz Venable in the Subaru Impreza. Berger had victory in the FIA Africa Rally Championship in his sights. Winner of the M4 class in the Volkswagen Shore Tour in Natal, Johnny Gimmel is a former 250 car champion and a highly talented driver from whom great things are expected in the future. Barry Fodler and Mike Burrow's cause was not helped by a slipping clutch on the Sassel VW Polo player. Second 
That's overall and second in class A6, the team total Toyota Corolla of J.P. Ganso and Graham Hooper. Sutton Singh demonstrated his sportsmanship by helping a stud John Lloyd on day two, which cost him dearly, otherwise he could probably have been placed higher up the leaderboard. The hard-charging Hergen Bacon and co driver Dave Lukowicz have moved up to ninth overall in the Sassel VW Polo player. A bit of a moment for Bacon. Pat Jansen van Rensburg and J.P. van Nippenhaisen were on their way to third in class A6 and 11th overall in the SA National Championship category after a steady work. Flying sixth overall in the FIA Africa Rally Championship category were James White and Phil Arsenault in the Ford Escort RS2000. A polished performance by Stephen Bosworth and Paul Van Drake saw them walk away with the honors in the MT class. The service bar get bandled, and there's a hybrid activity around the Hubbard Sassel VW Golf. Had the Delft Tourist problem manifested itself again? Yeah, we, we still got a recurring problem with the valve clearance and uh, um, once we've done the stage it closes up to the valve clearance and the car won't start after it so we've got to grind it every time after the stage. But we've got one more stage to go so I think we'll be okay. No problems in the Subaru pit with a burly Scott Berger in a relaxed mood. So we finished the second last stage, we're in second place overall, so we're going to take it really, really easy and get to the end now. On board with Jan Hubbig and Douglas Judd, and a close encounter with a public vehicle.